Hey guys, this is all here. Today I want to talk with you about what it takes to be a chemistry major. I'm going to go over what classes you need to take, what prerequisites you're going to need, and the layout of most chemistry majors that you're going to find at colleges around America. I'm also going to get into some tips and tricks about being a chemistry major, some stuff you might not know, and some stuff they just don't tell you about being a chemistry major. With that, let's hop right into it. First things first, I want to get into course structure because most chemistry majors are going to have to go over similar things in their major and it's usually going to happen in the same order. So first I want to go over prerequisites. These are classes you're going to need to take in order to qualify to get into higher level chemistry classes. At most colleges these are going to be Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and then Physics 1 and Physics 2, and those are calculus based physics. Now with calculus, there's also a chance you're going to need to take multivariable calculus depending on your college and depending on the curriculum. It's my recommendation to take these as soon as possible your freshman and sophomore years. So once you're into higher level chem classes and you need to shove more stuff into your schedule, they won't clog up your schedule and you won't have to work around them. Along with that, the classes that these are prerequisites for, you're going to start taking junior year, so you're going to want to get them in before then. So after that, we get into your intro chem classes. These are Gen Chem 1 and Gen Chem 2, sometimes known as Intro to Inorganic Chemistry, but I think General Chemistry is a much better name for them personally. In Gen Chem 1, you're basically going to be going over unit conversions, basic units of chemistry, and just kind of the language of chemistry. This is a very broad survey course, and you don't learn real chemistry in it, more so than you learn the language you're going to need to succeed in other chemistry classes as you move up. This is usually taken your first semester of your freshman year, and then you would move on second semester to take Gen Chem 2. Now some colleges do this differently, where you take Gen Chem 1, Organic 1, first semester and second semester of freshman year, and then move on to Organic 2 and Gen Chem 2 sophomore year but I think most colleges go with the two Gen Chems as freshman year courses. In Gen Chem 2, you get much more into actual chemistry classes. You learn about acids, bases, and all the sort of stuff with pH and pKa, along with a bit of electrochemistry, and you kind of build off of each other. I like Gen Chem 2 as a course much better because it feels a lot less like a survey course and a lot more like you're actually progressing your knowledge and building everything together. After your general chemistries, you get into organic chemistry. Yeah, the infamous organic chemistry. So organic chemistry gets a lot of hate as one of the hardest classes you can take in college, but in my opinion, it, it's honestly not that bad. It's just a lot of people have to take it as a pre-med or biology prerequisite class, and it's kind of a lot to take in with a whole nother major you're going for. In organic chemistry, you learn all about nomenclature and structures of carbon-based compounds. Now, this is a really fun class because you start getting into actual chemistry. You learn all about chemical reactions and how they can work in carbon-based compounds, and it's really cool to actually start seeing how the molecules interact and how they fit in together. It's kind of like a big puzzle piece. You also learn a bit about chirality, which is how molecules can be shaped differently and how you can have mirror image molecules, yet they'll work differently. This is where, in my opinion, chemistry really stops being survey classes and you really get into the meat and potatoes of chemistry. It's a really fun class if you put the time and effort to understand it and it's really enlightening. And you really want to do well and do your best in Organic Chemistry 1 because it will set the foundation of a lot of chem classes to come. After Organic Chemistry 1, you usually take Organic Chemistry 2, and this is very much a continuation of Organic Chemistry 1, but you go a lot more in-depth and you learn a lot more about actual chemistry. A decent portion of Organic Chemistry 1 is learning about nomenclature and basic molecular structures and things and how to name things, while Organic Chemistry 2 is almost all reactions. You're just learning about how the different types of reactions work in different molecules, and a lot of the problems you're going to be given in this class work with your given molecules, your given reagents, what will happen. This is really cool because it's starting to lay the groundwork of how organic synthesis works, and depending on your Organic Chemistry 2 class, you will actually do a bit of synthesis work, or at least start laying the foundations of how to do organic synthesis work, which is basically building your own, own molecules, and it is the foundation of drug development and a lot of cool fields of science. 
Organic Chemistry 2 kind of brings all the pieces you learned in Organic Chemistry 1 together and it makes a really cool class and it's a class that really builds on it so you can't get behind in any of these Organic Chem classes because every piece you learn about fundamentally builds on each other and if you get behind you're going to have to go all the way back and relearn things before you're even able to understand the stuff you're on. So it's really important that you stay caught up and you really do your work and run through plot problems in these classes. After your organic chemistries, you get into the infamous PCHEM or physical chemistry. Now, a lot of people say organic chemistry is one of the hardest classes they ever take, and I think that's just because they never got to physical chemistry. Physical chemistry is a crazy hard class, but don't let that dissuade you. In physical chemistry, it usually comes in two semesters, and one of the semesters you'll learn about like thermodynamics and gases and all that stuff, while in another semester you'll learn about quantum mechanics where you delve into Schrodinger's equation and modeling stuff like the hydrogen atom, you do stuff with 2D and 3D boxes, a lot of quantum mechanical stuff. If you have any physics major friends that have done quantum mechanics, it's basically the same stuff. This is a very, very math heavy course. You have to be prepared for that. You have to be caught up on your calcs one and two and both your physics classes. These are what those prereqs were for because these are very math heavy courses. It's honestly basically a math class that has a chemistry skin on it. This is a very intense course and a lot of what you're doing in this course is actually finding where some of the equations you learned about in your general chemistry classes are actually derived from and you'll derive them, see the origin of them, and really delve and get the deepest understanding you can of chemistry. Just be forewarned, this is a hard class. Be caught up on your math before you do it, and really don't get behind, and you're going to have to put your all into this. Even the American Chemical Society has a bumper sticker they sell that says, I survived PCHEM. So if you're not doing well in this class, get as much help as you can and don't fret too much because no one does well in PCHEM. It's a very hard class. So there's some other chemistry courses you're going to have to dive into as part of your core chemistry curriculum. One of these would be biochemistry. Biochemistry, you really delve into the chemistry of biological systems. You learn all about metabolism and how chemical structures interact to try and actually make all of that work in biology. After this, you have inorganic chemistry, which is kind of a continuation of Gen Chem 2, and you learn a lot more about non-carbon-based compounds. As you remember, some colleges actually call Gen Chem 2 intro to inorganic, so it's kind of a continuation, kind of not. You learn all about non-carbon-based compounds, and you learn about how they bond, how they interact. And besides inorganic, you're going to have instrumental analysis. This is a class where you delve all into the instrumentation that is used in the lab for chemists and how to process data. This class really teaches you how to interpret things and how to discover what molecules you're actually synthesizing. You go into stuff like NMR, infrared spectroscopy, mass spectrometry, all those really cool things on how chemists actually analyze their work and do it on a day-to-day -day basis. So those are really the main classes that I can think of for chemistry. Of course, you're going to have a lot of other chemistry electives you're going to have to take. You can take things like advanced organic, advanced PCHEM, and a whole bunch of chemistry classes depending on your college, but those aren't necessarily specific to every single person. That's more personal preference, what interests you. If you're more interested into the biochemistry side of things, you can take neurochemistry classes. If you're interested in the organic chemistry side of things, you can take something like organic synthesis. These are really cool classes like organic synthesis. You'll actually be learning a lot more about what they don't teach you in organics one and two, and really synthesizing your own molecules and how people synthesize different drugs and how they work. I've taken an organic synthesis class and it was a lot of fun and I honestly recommend it if your school offers one. Now for some tips and tricks for chemistry majors. I honestly wholeheartedly believe that if you are planning to be a chemistry major, even if you aren't declared yet, get into a chemistry lab as soon as you can. And I don't mean like the labs that are part of classes. Get into an actual research lab with a professor if you can. That's because the classes, they give you a lot of knowledge and you really need a lot of the stuff you learn in classes, but it has nothing to do with what chemists do on a daily basis. What chemists do on a daily basis, and what a lot of STEM majors do on a daily basis, is research. And research is nothing like being in the classroom. You're sitting there, you're applying knowledge, and you're actually trying to discover new things, and it's a completely different format. So even if you don't like the classes, you may fall in love with research and go through the major anyway, because research is what you would be doing on a daily basis anyway. 
So I really recommend getting into research. If you don't like research, I don't know if I can recommend the major because a lot of what you would be doing as a chemist is just research. And you really want to get a taste for the job as soon as you can so you know if you're picking the right major. Another tip, like I said for the organic chemistry classes, you really have to stay ahead on your work. Everything in the chemistry major adds on to each other and you really need to know things and you really need to retain the knowledge. It's not good enough to just cram. Uh, you need a fundamental understanding of what you're learning or you're not going to do great. That's where I see so many people do poorly or fail in their classes is they don't fundamentally understand the material, they just try and memorize it. So what you need to do, instead of just memorizing certain problem types and how to do them, is you need to really understand the theory and how it applies to the equations and processes you're using. That way, no matter what's thrown at you, you can just apply that theory, apply those equations, and you'll be able to solve any problem. Now, don't be too hard on yourself too. Chemistry is one of the hardest majors. It has one of the lowest GPAs of any major, and it's a lot a lot of work, but it can be really fulfilling anyway, as long as you stay up to date and really do your work. It's not a major that doesn't require any effort, so you have been warned. Now for post-college chemistry. Now there's multiple things you can do with chemistry. There's a whole bunch of different fields because everything in our life sort of needs chemistry. You have government, you have industry, you have academia. Now if you're in it for the money, academia sadly doesn't pay well, but that's where you're going to be doing a lot of your research. Academia is sort of glorified because you're doing your own research, you're doing what you want to research, but the thing is it's a really difficult path and the pay is not good. You're going to struggle for years being paid absolutely nothing, even with a grad degree as you try and get your own research position. Now it can be a really fulfilling thing and if it's what you want to do with your life and you have a plan and you have a passion, by all means go for it, but if money is your biggest concern, academia is not the path to go on. Now there's industry and government. Industry and government pay really well and they give really good benefits and there's a lot of different fields. The only thing is you're not going to be working as your own researcher, you're going to be working as a part of the team and you're going to be working your research towards the goals of the government or company. So you do have to keep that in mind. If you are in it for the money, then there is a lot of good paths in industry that will pay a lot of money for a really skilled chemist. Now straight chemistry also isn't the only field you can go in. Other fields will apply chemistry. Some jobs just need a scientist on board and a really great field would be material science and engineering. This is a field that employs a lot of chemists and sometimes for a lot higher pay than a straight chemist, but a chemistry degree applies really well to the materials degree because chemistry is just materials. Stuff like polymer science and all does really well hiring organic chemists and there's a lot of job options out there as long as you look. Some other paths you can go on as a chemistry major are things like law school or med school. If you go the med school route, be sure to fulfill your prerequisite requirements beforehand while you're still in your bachelor's degree. Chemistry is a really popular major for med school and it will prepare you really well for the MCAT as long as you take your other prerequisite classes. Another pathway is law school, which just sounds weird at first, but chemistry actually has one of the highest acceptance rates into law school than any other degree, like far higher than any pre-law or history degree. So if you want, if you're up for a challenge, chemistry is a good major for a lot of different grad schools, and people seeing that you got through a chemistry degree can mean a lot at any job. So that's a bit about the chemistry major, what sort of classes you're going to be taking, what sort of things you'll learn in them, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Be sure to hit the like button. I hope the video was helpful and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.